Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another screencast by your Earth Science teacher, Mr. Stano. Last time we left off, we were talking about igneous rocks, how they are intrusive or extrusively formed. Now we're going to go on to how we can identify our in igneous rocks based on the reference table, page six. One of the first things that we can look at is color. Now, remember when we were discussing minerals, that color really is not the best way to help us identify any minerals. Well, it does help us a little bit with igneous rocks. There are better things to look at, but we can look at the color and or the density of these rocks to help us figure out what it is, or at least what they're made of. We know that felsic rocks are gonna be light colored and have a low density. The minerals that make up these rocks are gonna be lighter colored, lower density, and they're on the felsic side. Versus mafic, as you'll see when we get to the reference table, is gonna be associated with dark colored and high density. So we have two different samples right here, lighter color, felsic, darker color, mafic. You'll see what these terms mean in a second when we take a look at the reference table. We go to our reference table, take a look at the middle of the chart. And right there we see our color, our density, and composition. Right now, let's just take a look at the color remember, we said we could either be light or dark. So let's go to the left where it's going to be lighter. Notice that a lighter color also equates to a lower density. And if we look at the composition, notice we see the term felsic. Or rich in SI and AL. SI, silicone, AL, aluminum. And if you didn't know these two chemical symbols, you could go to the last page of the mineral identification chart and it'll help you out. But just looking at the color, we can figure out its density and the elements that might be making that up. We can go to the other side, say if it's really dark colored. We also know that it's going to have a higher density and that the minerals, sorry, the elements making it up are going to be mafic or having Fe, which is iron or Mg, magnesium. So just by knowing the color, it can kind of give us a broad idea of what it might be. If we look up, these are examples of our igneous rocks, obsidian, pumice, rhyolite, two different types. We'll get into that. Granite, pegmatite. So granite, it's a nice easy one to start with, is going to be on the lighter side. Notice that it has a range. It can be really light, getting towards like a medium uh, color or a combination of light and dark minerals. But if we look down into this area, since it's on this side of the chart, it will have lighter color, lower density, and felsic. If we go over here, anything on this side, right? So like Gabbro, for instance, will be towards the darker, higher density, and mafic side. Let's clean that up a little bit. So based on whether it's left or right, will give us its color and help us figure out its density and composition. We can also look at its texture. Remember we were looking at texture before, uh, having to do with our crystal size. So texture associated with crystal size. So coarse grain, fine grain, glassy, and vesicular are different types of texture based on crystal size or no crystals, so coarse grained. Well, let's take a flip back of the reference table. And we can see here that if we go to coarse, it tells us that the crystals are one to 10 millimeters. Well, let's take a look back. Coarse, so coarse, one to 10 millimeter crystal size, which is gonna be large crystals. Well then fine grain would be small crystals, 
and we can go back and look at the reference table. Let me see here, fine grain, less than one millimeter. So less than one mm millimeter. Glassy, no crystals, like we see here, or vesicular. Let's take a look back at the reference table. Vesicular, we see it over here, and notice it says gas pockets. So vesicular means there's gas pockets. When this mineral formed, such as this one over here, such as this pumice, when this mineral formed, I'm sorry, this rock formed, it was ejected th from the earth and it cooled extremely fast. Any of the gases that were, um, that were in that rock or in that material when it cooled got trapped in there. So these gas pockets or gas or these gases got trapped within the rock as it cooled. And back on page six here, notice the texture right here associated with the crystal size is going to tell us about the size of the crystals and whether or not it has gas pockets. Here's pumice again. I brought that up. Notice the gas pockets inside of it. Some big gas pockets, some smaller ones. And you'll see in class, we'll go through and you'll see all different types. Here's again, looking at it a little bit further out and we can see all these pockets that are in here. Okay, back onto page six. We can also look at the minerals that are found in many different materials, such as granite. How do we figure out what minerals are in it? Well, we can go here to our reference table Remember, we can break it up and left into right. Top will be extrusive, bottom intrusive, but on the left side, such as granite, we look down. And when we look down, we see, oh, there's some feldspar. Keep going. There's some quartz. Keep going a little bit more. Oh, some feldspars right here. Some biotite. And some amphibole. So all these materials can be in granite. It doesn't have to be, but the chances are finding in there are pretty likely. We can take a look at something like gabbro. Here's a gabbro. We look down and we can see that it's going to have some of the feldspars, pyroxene, a little bit of that biotite, some amphibole, and some olivine. All these materials are in there. Something like dunite, almost all olivine. So we can change the amounts of these of this mineral composition, depending on where we go left or right. We'll talk about more of that in class. Okay, just taking a look at page six again. And notice that when we cut open a rock, we could take a thin section. So we have these special saws that cut very nice thin sheets of it. And you can see all the different minerals in here, the quartzes, the micas, and uh, I believe this is the amphibole right here, magnetite. It's going to be this darker gray. So we can see all the different materials in here, all the different minerals that make up these igneous rocks. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll end here before we go on to features about igneous intrusions. Um, I hope you enjoyed this screencast. Take care.